last time, the last, one of the last Thursday, I have touched on the subject on changes that causes our growth, changes in our life, amen, became a life lesson where through that, those lessons, we grow, all right? We grow, all right? It is at the most God's desire that each and every one of us, right? We grow through his word, according to his ways. Amen. There must be a growth, a significant growth. And then the world today, they are looking at you be first, all right? Then I will follow. That means to say they want to see us, the changes, all right? We as believers, we got to, we have to change and there must be a growth. And so that the world will come to know the Lord God that we serve, the true and the living God. Amen. And today the topic is along the same line of process of changes for growth. All right. The changes that we go through in our life, there are phases, there are sections, there are steps. And these steps are actually helping us to grow. Amen. Hallelujah. So that's the reason the title is done in such a way that the process of changes, amen, that gives us the growth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. In 1 John chapter 3, it says that we are children of God. All right. We are children of God. What a big title for you and I to say that we are the children of God. All right. So we inherit the possession, inherit the things that he has for us. So because we are the children of him. Amen. And also it says that we are the sons of God. Amen. The first John chapter four, verse four. It also said that he has given us the power. All right. For these changes, he has given us the power to go through these changes so that we become a strong person and there is growth in it. All right. So the word says, greater is used in me than he that is in the world. Amen. So he has given us the power to go through the changes. So it is not just mere the physical changes we are talking about. They are the spiritual changes as well. And with the process of changing goes with godly power in us. We have the Holy Ghost power in us, which is much greater than any other power required for these changes. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 So, so in, there are changes that can be described in these different ways. The changes that we go through, all right? We go through uh, these ways. The first one, there are three. Yeah? Three phases of changes. Three phases of changes. Uh, this can be described in this way, so easy for you to understand this evening lessons. Amen. The changes can be one, can be described as, I do not know what I don't know. Right? That means to say we are in a situation, I don't know anything about these changes we are talking about. All right? So we are in the, this group of phase is the don't know zoo. All right? Don't know, I don't know anything. I don't know that I do not also. So this is a level that we could have gone through initially when we come to know the Lord. Maybe even any, any other areas of your life, you could have been in this level. I do not know anything. I actually, I do not know that I, I do not know. All right? Sounds very innocent, right? All right. The second one is we go further after the second, the second phase is I know what I don't know. This is where we confess ourselves. There are many things that I supposed to know, I didn't know, right? Uh huh. This is where the genuine spirit rise to learn more of his way because I do not know. Now I realize that because I do not know all this while. Have you come across this kind of a statement from out of your heart when pastor was preaching and then there's a great revelation came upon you mind and say, oh my goodness, I don't know that, I don't know all this, which is good, amen? And the third one, I know what I know. 
All right? So your change is grown to the third level to say, well, now, all right? Good enough for the time that I don't know that and this, but today, now I know what I don't know. So what are we supposed to do when you know something? That's what our lessons is all about. Amen? Hallelujah. In, um, so God has given us the power for the growth that he wants us to. That means to say he has his own imagination, the kind of person that he wants us to become through these changes. So changes are for good, regardless what phase that you are in right now. Okay, you can put yourself which face you are right now, looking at the screen, right? Which face are you right now? God wants us to progress. At the level of phase one, phase two, or phase three, God's greatest intention that we, he wants us to grow. Amen? And has given us the ability to develop ourselves in every area of our life. Amen? Hallelujah. So he wants us to move forward from where we are right now, in whatever three phases, where you should be according to his plan. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And this to speak by faith. This evening, each and every one of you, we are not just dangling, trying to find where we stand and what we do, but today, the people of God, just now we read in 1 John chapter 3, verse 2, we are children of God. As a father or mother has a plan for the children, God already has a plan in our life. He already has a structure. All right? So whatever the face you are, God already has a structure and he knows where you are right now. Amen? Hallelujah? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's go into the uh, one part of the Bible. Very interesting story in the Old Testament. Genesis chapter 37 right verses 1 to 50 just take note of that take time to read and those you know about it this is a beautiful story a family story a real story about a man called joseph right and his father jacob and he had 11 brothers right okay now joseph is a favorite child of his father jacob and the father also, you know very well that he made a very colorful coat, a jacket for him, all right, to show that his favoritism and also his love, his next expression of his love, amen? So 11 brothers, Joseph is living with 11 brothers. Here he is, only one of them, all right, as a coat and that father Jacob have given. Just imagine huh, the size of a football team and only one guy wearing the JC. And that is the Joseph of Rania. Amen. Hallelujah. And he receives special attention from his father. He always accept and get, uh, get special treatment. And one beautiful thing that he has, besides the other brothers, the 11 brothers, right? He is able to dream. God given him the vision. He has given the power for him to dream. And God used him to dream dreams and explain the whole thing about. And Joseph had two dreams, as you know, right? The first dream itself, when he came and told what's the dream about, uh, all the brothers were not happy, right? Not only getting the special code, but on top of that, this guy is able to prophesize and able to explain and he's able to dream. Now, this is not the guy that uh, like we have, we don't have all those, but this guy had a special treatment. And on top of that, another second dream and he dreamed the father has to come in because it looks like the father has to come in, you know, to clear this dispute and God is standing in the middle and it's, it's a family issue, right? He is a special child and he has a special thing from the father and he can dream and he can, he can explain the dream about what is it about and again he is able to dream another dream. You can read that in verse 1 to 50 that gave him all right, that put him in a pressure of all the 11 brothers with the father being there trying to make peace. Let's see, Joseph is in the phase one as we learned just now. I do not know that I do not know. All right, Joseph could have been the, the level over there. He don't know what's happening, 
but he went and told everybody what the dream is all about. The family knows about it, all right? And all the brothers know about it. And this didn't go well with the rest of the brothers. So as you know, the brothers has an ulterior motive. They has a plan, all right, to take him out of the family, right? Now, this story, as goes further, you know well that Joseph has end up in the pit, was thrown by all his 11 brothers, all right? And he was later was sold to the merchants on the way to Egypt as a slave and he, the life went on. Look at the faces of life that Joseph went on. Eventually, all right, you know very well the beautiful part that he was in the palace. So this story in summary, all right, it's a man from the pit, a man went down, went down to the palace. How beautiful story it is, a man, if a life, a real life incident has taken place that you and I can learn many less lessons out of this. Amen. These are the phases that Joseph has gone through. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. One way or another, this story has caught the attention of your lifestyle. What are the phases that I've gone through? Okay. What I was before and how the Lord taken you from phase one, phase two, phase three, and where you are right now. Amen. That could have been a lot of lessons when you turn back and you see, you could write even a book. That's so our pastor we did it. He wrote a book on how he came to know the Lord. He went from Malaysia to Germany, from back to Malaysia. And those are the real incident taking place, inspiring story to, to teach us each and every one of us. Amen. So likewise, what is your story this evening? What are the phases that have you gone through? As Jacob, or maybe higher level, or maybe lower Maybe a different path. Amen. Hallelujah. But all those changes, the faces of changes that you've gone through, that have made you strong or going to make you even stronger. Hallelujah. Those are the faces. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Great lessons that we have learned. All right. That is to show, to check on us. Um, where do I stand? What are the measure of growth? that I have. I've grown. Thank the Lord for that. Praise the Lord for that. You've gone through all the winding roads, maybe uphill road, low hill road. Yeah. And today, now you are here. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So what is your measure right now? That means what have you became? Or what are you becoming of? God is interested in that. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. 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 The believers out there, they want to see tangible result. They want to see something. I see, then I believe. That is the world that we are living in right now. Amen. When we know a lot of things, turmoil going to come, the going to hardship going to come along the way, all right, it may not be well received by them. They want to see first, okay? When we share the certain things, they might see first in you. Each and every one of us, are they seeing Jesus in us? So that's what, the tangible result. Then I will open up my heart. There are many who have, that you could have come across in the process of witnessing that they want to wait and see. Even our very home, all right? We are put in a situation that we were to show some results Result that they can see, tangible results, some changes in your life and our life, then they know God is working in us. Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. So the process today that you and I are going through, right, what are those? It is good to take the measurement, just taking a measuring tape and measure, all right, what are the changes that you have or you are receiving it and that is coming into your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many at this point of a time can, can, can uh, give a testimony that how your life was there before, many years ago, and how the Lord brought you. That's what this lesson is all about. Those are the changes, right? Those are the changes that cause you to come up to a level such as this. 
Joseph have gone through, right? The pressure with his family, in his village. Then he doesn't know that that he's uh, the eleven brothers, his very own blood brothers, to say they are having some master plan behind him. He didn't know that, right? Then sincerely, genuinely, he was seeking for them, looking for them in the farm. He was meant to go somewhere that he got no idea. That's not a normal place that he goes. But something was behind, planned behind by his brothers, right? So that was the first one that Joseph has gone through. He didn't know that he don't know. He was just an innocent, innocent young uh, child over there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There, there could be certain time in your life that you could have gone through things that you do not know that you don't know. All right? Hallelujah. Maybe at this point of a time, you may be in this situation also. There are certain areas in your life that you do not know something is happening. Something going to happen. All right? This lesson is actually to highlight to us and how we overcome situations like that. It can be another situation that you are in the face that we mentioned just now that eventually that you come to know. Joseph eventually came to know what is this life is all about. My very own brother, brothers who took me, put me in the pit, amen, make up a story to tell my very own father who loved me so much, tore my clothes, right, of my favorite clothes. And not only that, to give a story to say that I was beaten up, all right, I was handled by, by an animal, all right. And then the story is went to the father who was very, very sad. Maybe a couple of days he did not eat and he was not in, in the high spirit. He was in the low spirit because his very favorite son was in the situations like that. Okay? And just imagine, for money, the own brothers sold him to the merchants. But this turning point, all right, in Joseph's point, God was in him. God knows he has a plan for Joseph. He knows where his life is going to be, right? God knows where his life is going to be. 13 over years, this struggle has gone through in Joseph's life. And then the breaking point came in where Pharaoh, being the king, being the biggest and the most richest country in the world, all right? he was being brought into the palace. Just imagine one moment he was beaten up, one moment he was sold down, all right? And here again, here, here there, he is being invited, all right? To be part of the palace workers, all right? Hallelujah. It's good to turn back. This story teaches us to turn back, to see the curves that we came across and the Lord, and the Lord was in it. The Lord guided us. Amen. Hallelujah. So those changes are the one which will make you strong, and that will make you strong ever. Amen. Let's not miss the learning point that you've gone through this learning curve where the Lord was in it, right? And something that you got to take it and put in your life to practice it day by day. What are those? that you have gone through, that in this learning curve that the Lord has taught you. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The Bible repeatedly teaches us, right, to be the best, right, to give the best in every area of our life. Joseph did that. He did not give up any form of, he didn't give up his life, right? Just imagine somebody throw, right, him into the pit. And then just play a mock-up story. And, and, and he knows they were the brothers who did that. That is the greatest discouragement, is to see that his very own brothers are doing it. But he could have turned back and ran back to his father. But he did not. He was sold to the unknown people. There he couldn't given up. There was a time of slavery that he has gone through before he was brought into the palace. Imagine so much of discouragement. So much of turning left, right, right? And how he could have maybe encouraged him, how he could have inspired him, but he did that. Hallelujah, hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. So here, here it is. What is important in our life as we go through phases of life? God must be glorified. Amen. Hallelujah. God must be glorified. We will turn into Ephesians chapter 28. Sorry, Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 to 10. Okay, it is not in there. It's all right. Okay, it teaches about in everything. All right, in everything. Whether whatever face you are right now, in everything, all right, God enable us to glorify in him. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And if you are in a point, whether you face one, face two, or face three, could you put the word into the, your story, your testimony, that God will be glorified. Hallelujah. Maybe you were in the pit. Amen. God to be glorified. Maybe you, you have been gone to this uh, unknown place. God to be glorified. Hallelujah. 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 So we ought to imitate us of the Lord Jesus. Amen. In all these phases that we go through. In uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, chapter, chapter 4, verse 7. 1 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7. We are to be the imitators of the Lord Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. You might have heard preachings and teachings to, to edify you, to encourage you. When you go through the valley time, hallelujah, is to call on the name of the Lord Jesus and also encourage you. If Jesus is with me in this time of valley, what he will do, all right? That is a learning point. The changes at that point of a time, all right? If God is with me and in this speed, I'm Joseph, what he will do, all right? Maybe at this point of a time, there are things that you might be struggling, maybe issue in your family life, maybe in your career, maybe in your, your business, maybe it's a relationship issue, or maybe something's tormenting you, all right? And here it is, it is just another Curve. It is another change where you have the every right to call on the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Wherever I am right now, Lord Jesus, come and attend to me. Lord, I know I'm in the pit. Maybe I'm the lowest level. Okay. Lord, I need you. Hallelujah. 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 Changes at times not easy. Okay, changes are not easy. Just have gone through a very uncomfortable changes in his life. All right, so changes in our life in that manner is not a comfortable thing. Not everybody like the changes. They like to be where they are. Okay, so when changes comes in, it is your people. You may not be uncomfortable. You may not be comfortable. It uneasy. Changes can bring complaining. Changes can bring irritation, all right? Changes can bring discouragement, okay? A long time ago, the author wrote a very interesting book with a title, right, called Who Moved My Cheese? Maybe some of you might have read it, or heard it. This is about the mice in a mess. You're all there, living it very happily, all right? Every day, this particular mouse or mice will have the best of a cheese. It will be there waiting. And the life was so easy. Every time he wakes up, very happily he'll go to the spot where the cheese is ready and he'll enjoy himself. And there were a couple of their friends who were there. Every day without fail, the cheese was there, right? No complaining, life was beautiful. But one day, somebody moved the cheese and these mice, got very, very angry. Who is the guy who moved my cheese? I've been hitting this happily. My life was good. And he started complaining and complaining, never ending. Because somebody moved the cheese that he'd been surviving with all this while. 
maybe we are in a situation, maybe we are comfortable, amen, in your life, maybe in your, your personal life, in, in your career life, it can be your church going life, everything was comfortable, everything was nice, but we are not ready for the changes, right? After a year, there's slowly some changes teaching us some lessons, teaching us to modify our lifestyle. Pray from your home. Right? Listen to the preaching from Zoom. Worship together all by looking at a screen, not going to the church, church, not physically being there. Those are the changes that we are going through. Amen? Hallelujah. And this change is something not we expected. Nobody told in the month of March in that particular year there's going to be a virus called COVID-19 going to change our lifestyle. Changes has taken place. Amen. What are we? How are we responding to the changes? Where you have to sit at home and pray. No way to, you can go to church. Amen. Worship? Yes. You got to worship. Imagine you are in a church, you got to worship. All right? Yes. You have to see your friends, your loved ones, brothers and sisters in the church just by looking at the screen. The whole thing changed. Fellowship is all over the screen. Amen. How are we responding it? Have our time, our prayer have increased? Those are some changes that you got to check. Some measurement you got to check. Amen. The time that I fellowship in whatever way that we can fellowship, or I may take every means to fellowship with our brothers and sisters. How is my reading of God's word could have increased because most of the time you are under one roof. You are able to plan your time as it increased. How are my fellowship with my loved one at home as it increased? Amen. Have I taken time, taken note, the people out there need my prayer. Have I praying or am I praying for the people who need my prayer? Changes for good. These changes will make you better and greater and stronger. Hallelujah. There are things that we can control. There are things that we can only pray by faith. One of these is what's happening right now. We can pray. The time will come that everything will clear. But there are things that we can do right now within our means, within the power given to us is to increase our level, our measurement dealing with God. Hallelujah. Are we taking time to write a note, maybe a WhatsApp note or an email, or can be whatever way to reach out to somebody out there to talk about our goodness of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Are we reaching out to the people out there who are crying, trying to find out the meaning of life? That's a measurement, church. As we go through these changes, are we changing? Is there any growth? Are we growing higher? Is our measuring tape shows that our spiritual life is getting greater, better, compared to the non-COVID-19 times? Compared to the days that we are in the church, now we are left out there. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 The changes at times, as we mentioned, is not that sweet that we, we, we think. We know, or maybe you can just reflect the story of the, the, the process of a butterfly. How a dirty, ugly looking, right? The worm right becomes the wiggly worm becomes beautiful when they go through the the system the changes the process amen eventually finally they become beautiful butterfly can fly freely that is caused because of the changes okay the butterfly accepted the change if move on with the changes likewise how is our life lifestyle today are we moving on are we going further? Are we giving chance, all right, to move left or right to say, Lord, you have called me into your kingdom. Whether COVID or no COVID, you can test my love for you, Lord. Amen. You are in the ministry. 
whether COVID or no COVID, Lord, I will do what you call me to do. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Test me, try me, I'm there for you. That's a measurement. That's a measurement that you got to bring it up. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Look at these changes of this insect have caused a great changes to look at the beautiful butterfly. You and I, I'm sure many occasions you could have seen the colorful butterfly and um, we could have given credit, Lord, how beautifully you painted this, the wings of this butterfly. And man, at times we look at it, we really admire how the Lord has done that by using multicolor, beautiful color, the psychedelic color, and there came this beautiful butterfly where people can run after, try to catch them. Now, likewise, God has a great plan. It is not stage one, church. It is not phase one. God wants to take you to phase two. God wants to take you to phase three, to say, here I am. God, I know you have a will for me. God, I know you have a perfect plan for my life. I now, I know, and here I am. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Changes, church, changes, changes. We cannot be doing the same thing like how we were as a young Christian because when we are a young Christian, young in the Lord, we always, good reasons to give, I am young in the Lord. I just got baptized. I just received the baptism of the Holy Ghost. I'm new in the church. I'm a new member in the Gospel Lighthouse Church. That was when you were in the phase one. But as you are right now, right now, you are ready for the changes. You're ready to action out of the changes. You want to grow. That's the determination today, church. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If we don't, we, if we don't change, what happens? Nothing changes. There's a saying goes, we cannot be doing the same thing expecting different result. That makes sense, right? Yeah? We cannot do the same thing again, again, expecting a different result. We cannot, there are certain things without we realizing voluntarily we'll be doing the same thing again. Same type of prayer. Same type of time that we are giving to God. Same kind of thing that we do, right? And then same language, there is no changes. Maybe there are other areas you can do, you can check the same way, right? Even in your working place, if the boss see you, you're doing the same thing again and again, and there's no changes, it's time for you to receive the letter, right? A letter to say a goodbye. Especially this time, they are, very, uh, they, they are looking for reasons to cut down the manpower, right? And uh, cut down the courses. So if you are one of them doing the same thing again and again, doing the same thing like how we used to do when a company's mission is to do, bring up the production to survive, to pay the salary and to run the operation, pay the rental and everything to survive. And the bosses and board of directors are, you know, they're all under extra effort where you are just the same. You're not a team player, all right? And they verify your effort, verify your result and they see your performance, that will be time for them to say goodbye to you. Okay? I believe that as a child of God, wherever you are placed, whether in a job, in any assignment, to take this point of a time to give your best. God wanted to give the best in everything that you do. If you're not prayed in this, throughout these changes, prayed for your bosses, maybe this is a good time to pray. If you have not prayed for your subordinates, your team members, let them some changes. Tell the people that you are praying for them. Amen. Hallelujah. Praying for their family. Praying for the protection. You have heard someone affected by this COVID. Maybe there's a time to rise up and say, we will, and I will pray. All right. I will pray for your family, regardless of what religion they are, what race they are. Hallelujah. What are the changes? that you would like to do, that you will be happy so that God will be happy with the changes. Is there any changes? Amen. Is there any effectiveness of seeking God in prayer? Changes, because that's what the growth is going to be measured. Hallelujah. 
time of devotion and increase because you are under the roof i'm not telling you that you are working most of you are working from home but again the time is in your hand this time piece is controlled by you all right you can increase the time in effectively seeking god amen hallelujah reading god's word talking to somebody in the church outside the church amen reaching out all right through whatever ways and means that he can do by using the technologies existing at this time like what we do one of it amen am i doing something am i changing am i bringing growth to my personal life amen hallelujah or am i the same person the pre covid and the covid which is going on right now god want you to change church hallelujah hallelujah it's good to reflect yourself means take time all these areas am i improving am i developing because this changes has especially this time of season that we are right now it is a huge change a lifestyle change amen a spiritual atmosphere has changed where we see one another amen in the church but we are not seeing so the everything there's a lot of changes so it's good to reflect ourselves and see am i changing the world is changing the economic world is changing am i changing spiritually as i go through these changes hallelujah 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 if god of god is speaking to you i pray that you will say amen hallelujah and you give you you will give yourself an opportunity to change and grow hallelujah hallelujah there are many benefits as we change in closing and i want to say that there are many of changes that are as we go through change it is not as we go through the changes we are left to dry or we left alone all right hallelujah changes such as this going to make you stronger that's one of the benefit i'm talking about a benefit in in uh, in closing in uh, first timothy chapter 6 was 18 to 19 that they do good that they be rich in good works amen ready to distribute willing to communicate and work start a good foundation against the time to come that they may lay hold on eternal life amen this can be the test church your time of going through the changes can be a test okay can be a test your god says well you are left alone without practically seeing our pastor your spiritual leaders without stepping into the church now is a time you go through the changes and show your love for god hallelujah that means we got to be more aggressively seeking god hallelujah hallelujah that they do good Amen. That they be rich in good works. These are the good works. Time is demanding. Time is such that you get to, you must get the best out of you as a believer. To get the best out of you as a Christian, as to get the best out of you as a child of God. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 Willing to communicate, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves as a good foundation. what we are doing right now this season this point of a time all right we are not just doing it for the sake of doing we are genuinely building a strong foundation when the church reopens every bit of it we going to thank the lord for that when you see our loved one we going to appreciate one another hallelujah hallelujah when we step into the church when we worship it's not going to be a zoom worship we going to hear our brothers and sisters we can see the impact we can feel the presence of people of god worshiping together they're going to be something great hallelujah praise god praise god it's about life this changes that we going through is going to develop you going to show you to be a great child of god and this something got to do with the eternal life hallelujah joseph was left alone 
We don't know his brothers. He might look at the time as a slave, all right? But he knows that time he was in phase two. He knows what is lacking. He knows what is learning. He knows the great lessons going through. Church is time for us to reflect ourselves what we are going through at times such as this. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We might have the palace life in future, but the second phase is something very eternal, something intimate, something serious and very serious because it's got to do with you and you. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise God, praise God, hallelujah. So it's time to give glory and honor to God during this time. First Peter chapter 4, verse 10. Or, yeah, 16. Amen. Yet if man, any man suffer as a Christian, let him be not shamed, but let him glorify God on this behalf. Hallelujah. Jesus, mighty God. I believe you are thankful to the Lord during this time of we staying away, we can hold on to God. Hallelujah. We can hold on to his promises. Hallelujah. We can hold on to all the teaching passages given to you. Amen. Hallelujah. We can hold on to our brothers and sisters' fellowship, encouragement, and edifying. We can depend on that. Hallelujah. And today we have God in, with us. We can depend to receive the word of God this evening. We can depend on the word of God. We can rely on it. Would you want to be thankful? Hallelujah. When we go through the process of changes, it must develop us. It must take us to a higher level. Amen. It must make us and mold us to be a strong Christian, to be a strong believer. Hallelujah. That's the measurement that you got to do. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. God shall be manifested in us as we go through these changes. Is your changes is there any manifestation of God? Hallelujah. God is putting a lot of talents, untapped talents. God has given you a lot of gift in you. Amen. Hallelujah. God has imparted so much of love in you. And are we manifesting to others, to our loved one, that is God's name to be glorified? It must be a time. It may be a time such as this. All right. But I still praise God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I shall glorify you, Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. I will magnify your holy name, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes, I will not look for another day for the church to reopen. But God, even today, even now, even as I receive the word of God, even as I read the word of God, God, I'm so thankful for the Church of Gospel Lighthouse Church, Kuala Lumpur. Thank you, mighty God. I want your name to glorify this life. Through this life, hallelujah. I give you the praise and I give you the honor. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That is global. Amen? Where you don't wait for another fine day, all right, to worship together, but when you are alone, amen, that you want to magnify God in every dealings in your life. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. And also not to wait and told to do that. All right. Sometimes we wait our spiritual leaders to tell what to do and then we go further. But today, now, there's no way we can wait to be told. Amen. It has to come with your own initiative, right, for you to go further. That is from your heart. Amen. We are doing it by yourself. Amen. Without somebody forcing you, without somebody initiating, you are initiating that. Hallelujah. God is good. God is good. Amen. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, amen, the word of God is bringing to you to give without calculating. To give yourself like not a person which is a stingy person. Right? Because it's all about giving out. It's a time to give out. Yes. All right? We have been taking enough. We are at stage three, phase three. God, now I realize that I know that I know. Amen. Hallelujah. So it's a time for me to give out, not to be a taker, all right, all the time. But now it's a time for me to give in everything that you have given me. Amen. Give. 
and it shall be given unto you good measures. It might sound like money, material blessing, but I'm talking about including that also. There are other things in other area God has given you, has impacted you, amen, that you're trying for you to give out to yourself and also to your fellow men. Hallelujah. So give, it shall be given unto you good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over shall man give unto your bosom. For with the same measure that he may riddle, it shall be measured to you again. Hallelujah. The measure of you give. Hallelujah. It means a lot. There are time to receive. There are time to give. There are time to listen. There are time to do. Amen. There are time to sow. So means six. There are time to reap. Hallelujah. Yes. Hallelujah. There are time to cry. There are time to feel joy. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. I believe at times such as this, the Lord is speaking to you. All right. It might be a winding road. The changes that you are going through. Amen. I pray the Lord Jesus is with you. Amen. Hallelujah. That his strength upon you. Amen. Hallelujah. And his mercy and grace upon you. The life that we live is to glorify him. Hallelujah. Is to magnify his holy name. Hallelujah. These changes that we go through. Amen. Hallelujah. It's a journey. So we had to have that rise, right attitude to say, this is our changes that I go through. It's a life journey. The Lord God is taking me. He's with me. Right? So I will enjoy this journey. I will not crumble. I will not complain. But I will find every way and means to excel. I'll find ways and means I can do more. Amen. This is the changes. I'm still in the making. Hallelujah. I'm still in the making. God is still making me. I'm still in Potter's house where I'm still in the grinding process. Right? There is a Potter making me. I'm not a finished product. I'm not a finished vessel. God is still making me. I'm still in the process of these changes. I'm develop God is developing me to be a better person, to be a great person in his kingdom and for his kingdom. Hallelujah, hallelujah. May the Lord bless you. Hallelujah. I'd like to ask Sister Hawaii again to pray in this area. It might be a personal changes that you go through, but I can assure you there is a personal growth and you'll be surely to be, will be a better person. You'll be a person somewhere you're going to stand in a higher ground and look at the valley and say, that's what, that's where I was. But today I have God <coughs> who brought me all these stages and I'm ready to glorify God. Hallelujah. It may be in a spiritual area. It may be in your finance area. This is much that I had many, many years ago. But today, I'm ready to glorify God as blessed me. Amen. Hallelujah. And until my hands cannot contend. Hallelujah. God want to make you as a great testimony, church. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I want to thank you for listening, for paying attention, for taking heed of this word of God this evening. The changes surely going to bring growth in your personal life. Hallelujah. The Lord bless you. Amen. Amen.